commercial free Catholic charismatic channel. He's strengthening the faith of so many people. To promote the gift of church teaching, dedicated for the new evangelization. God's blessings on your work, may God bless and prosper you. Shalom World, God's own channel. Welcome to one and all, and a very special welcome to uh, all of you who are joining us uh, through our partners in radio and television, EWTN TV, NET TV, Radio Maria TV, Salt and Light TV, uh, Telecare TV, Catholic TV, and Shalom World TV. Cristo Gesù Salvatore, and the procession has begun.
Pope Francis has achieved the sanctuary and made his reverence to the high altar. And having taken the thurible from the hand of the deacon ministrant, is sensing the crucifix and the altar space. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pax Vobis. <coughs> Fratres, agnocamos peccata nostra, ut aptissimus al sacra misteria celebrata. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
Genitum filium tuum, unxisti Spiritu Santo, Christumque Dominum constituisti, concede propitius, ut eiusten consecraciones participes efecti, testes redemptionis in veniamur in mundo. Per Dominum nostrum, Jesum Christum, filium tuum, Qui te convivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. And with this collect prayer, which sets the tone for the entire liturgy, the Holy Father has asked God, who anointed his only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously to grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to his redemption in the world. Dal libro del profeta Isaia Lo Spirito del Signore Dio è su di me perché il Signore mi ha consacrato con lo reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 61, verses 1 to 3, 6, 8, and 9. A proclamare la libertà degli schiavi. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord, a day of vengeance for our God to comfort all those who mourn and to give them for ashes a garland, 
for mourning robe the oil of gladness, for despondency praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. Sarete chiamati sacerdoti del Signore, ministri del nostro Dio, sarete detti. Io darò loro fedelmente il salario, concluderò con loro un'alleanza eterna. I will, I reward them faithfully, and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations, their descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. Verbum Domini The responsorial psalm is Psalm 88. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Canterò per sempre l'amore del Signore. Canterò per sempre l'amore del Signore. Ho trovato Davide mio servo. Il mio santo olio l'ho consacrato, la mia mano è il suo sostegno, il mio braccio è la sua forza. mia fedeltà e il mio amore saranno con Lui, e nel mio nome si innalzerà la Sua fronte. Egli mi invocherà, Tu sei mio Padre, mio Dio e roccia della mia salvezza. The second reading is from the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse of St. John the Apostle, chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and has made us a line of kings, priests to serve his God and Father. To him then be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him even those who pierced him, and all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, who is to come.
Dominus Pobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Luca. Gloria A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. The deacon of the gospel, having sensed the book of the gospel, now proclaims. In illo tempore venit Jesus Nazareth, ubi erat nutritus, et intravit secundum consuetudinem suam, die sabati in synagoga, et surrexit legere, et traditus est lili, liber profete Isaiae, et ut revolvit librum, Invenit locum, ubi scriptum erat, Spiritus Domini super me, et propter quod sit me evangelizare pauperibus, misit me predicare captivis remissione, et cecis visum, Dimitere confractos in remissione, predicare anum domini acceptum. Et cum plicuis et librum, redidit ministro et sedit. Et omnium in synagoga hoculi herant, Intendente in eum. Cepit autem dicere hatilos, odie impleta est hec scriptura, in auribus vestris. Verbum Domini, Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set down, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. For those of you just joining us, this is Vatican Radio's live English language coverage of the Chrism Mass from St. Peter's Basilica. Pope Francis is 
the principal celebrant, and the homilist. La mia mano è il suo sostegno, il mio braccio è la sua forza. Così pensa il Signore quando dice dentro di sé, ho trovato, ho trovato Davide, mio servo, con il mio santo olio l'ho consacrato. Così pensa il nostro Padre ogni volta che trova un sacerdote e aggiunge ancora la mia fedeltà e il mio amore saranno con lui. Egli mi invocherà. Tu sei mio padre, mio Dio e roccia della mia salvezza. È molto bello. My hand shall ever abide with him. My arms also shall strengthen him. This is what the Lord means when he says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. It is also what our father thinks whenever he encounters a priest. And he goes on to say, My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him. He shall cry to me, You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. It is good to enter with the psalmist into this monologue of our God. He is talking about us, his priests, his pastors, but it is not really a monologue since he is not the only one speaking. The Father says to Jesus, Your friends, those who love you, can say to me in a particular way, You are my Father. If the Lord is so concerned about helping us, it is because he knows that the task of anointing his faithful people is demanding. It can tire us. We experience this in so many ways, from the ordinary fatigue brought on by our daily apostolate, la stanchezza dei sacerdoti. Sapete to the weariness of sickness, questo, death, and even martyrdom, di tutti voi. the tiredness of priests. Do you know how often I think about this weariness which Quando all of you experience? Sono io. Prego per voi che lavorate in mezzo al popolo fedele di Dio I think about it often and I pray about it often, especially when I am tired myself. I pray for you as you labor amid the people of God entrusted to your care, many of you in lonely and dangerous places. Our weariness, dear priests, is like incense which silently rises up to heaven. Our weariness goes straight to the heart of the Father. Know that the Blessed Virgin Mary is well aware of this tiredness and she brings it straight to the Lord. As our mother, she knows when her children are weary. And this is her greatest concern. Welcome, rest, my child, we will speak afterwards. Whenever we draw near to her, she says to us, I, am I not here with you, I who am your mother? And to her son she will say, as she did at Cana, they have no wine. It can also happen that whenever we feel weighed down by pastoral work, we can be tempted to rest however we please, as if rest were not itself a gift of God. We must not fall into this temptation. Our weariness is precious in the eyes of Jesus, who embraces us and lifts us up. Come to me, all who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. 
Whenever a priest feels dead tired yet is able to bow down in adoration and say, Enough for today, Lord, and entrust himself to the Father, he knows that he will not fall but be renewed. The one who anoints God's faithful people with oil is also himself anointed by the Lord. He gives you a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Let us never forget that a key to fruitful priestly ministry lies in how we rest and how we look at the way the Lord deals with our weariness. How difficult it is to learn how to rest. This says much about our trust and our ability to realize that we too are sheep. A few questions can help us in this regard. Do I know how to rest by accepting the love, gratitude, and affection which I receive from God's faithful people? Or once my pastoral work is done, do I seek more refined relaxations, not those of the poor, but those provided by a consumerist society? Is the Holy Spirit truly rest in times of weariness for me, or is he just someone who keeps me busy? Do I know how to seek help from a wise priest? Do I know how to take a break from myself, from the demands I make on myself, from my self-seeking, and from my self-absorption? Do I know how to spend time with Jesus, with the Father, with the Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, with my patron saints, and to find rest in their demands, which are easy and light, and in their pleasures, for they delight to be in my company, and in their concerns and standards, which have only to do with the greater glory of God. Do I know how to rest from my enemies under the Lord's protection? Am I preoccupied with how I should speak and act, or do I entrust myself to the Holy Spirit who will teach me what I need to say in every situation? Do I worry needlessly, or like Paul, do I find repose by saying, I know him in whom I have placed my trust. Let us return for a moment to what today's liturgy describes as the work of the priest. To bring good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom to prisoners and healing to the blind, to offer liberation to the downtrodden, and to announce the year of the Lord's favor. Isaiah also mentions consoling the broken-hearted and comforting the afflicted. These are not easy, nor are they purely mechanical jobs, like running an office, building a parish hall, or laying out a soccer field for the young of the parish. The tasks of which Jesus speaks call for the ability to show compassion. Our hearts are to be moved and fully engaged in carrying them out. We are to rejoice with couples who marry. We are to laugh with the children brought to the baptismal font. We are to accompany young fiancés and families. We are to suffer with those who receive the anointing of the sick in their hospital beds. We are to mourn those burying a loved one. We are to mourn with those burying a loved one. 
All these emotions can exhaust the heart of a pastor. For us priests, what happens in the lives of our people is not like a news bulletin. We know our people. We sense what is going on in their hearts. Our own heart, sharing in their suffering, feels compassion is exhausted, broken into a thousand pieces, moved and even consumed by the people. Take this. Eat this. These are the words the priest of Jesus whispers repeatedly while caring for his faithful people. Take this. Eat this. Take this. Drink this. In this way, our priestly life is given over in service, in closeness to the people of God. And this always leaves us weary. I wish to share with you some forms of weariness on which I have meditated. There is what we can call the weariness of people, the weariness of the crowd. For the Lord and for us, this can be exhausting. So the Gospel tells us, yet it is a good weariness, a fruitful and joyful exhaustion. The people who followed Jesus, the, the families which brought their children to him to be blessed, those who had been cured, those who came with their friends, the young people who were so excited about the Master, they did not even leave him time to eat. But the Lord never tired of being with people. On the contrary, he seemed renewed by their presence. This weariness in the midst of activity is a grace on which all priests can draw. La gente ama, desidera e ha bisogno dei suoi pastori. Il popolo fedele non ci lascia senza impegno diretto. And how beautiful it is. People love their priests. They want and need their shepherds. The faithful never leave us without something to do unless we hide in our offices or go out in our cars wearing sunglasses. There is a good and healthy tiredness. It is the exhaustion of the priest who wears the smell of the sheep, but also smiles the smile of a father rejoicing in his children or grandchildren. It has nothing to do with those who wear expensive cologne and who look at others from afar and from above. We are the friends of the bridegroom. This is our joy. If Jesus is shepherding the flock in our midst, we cannot be shepherds who are glum, plaintive, or even worse, bored. The smell of the sheep and the smile of a father. Weary, yes, but with the joy of those who hear the Lord saying, Come, O blessed of my father. Il demonio e i suoi seguaci non dormono. E dato che le loro orecchie non sopportano la parola di Dio, there is also the kind of weariness which we can call the weariness of enemies. The devil and his minions never sleep. And since their ears cannot bear to hear the word of God, they work tirelessly to silence that word and to distort it. Confronting them is more wearying. It involves not only doing good, with all the exertion this entails, but also defending the flock and oneself from evil. 
ed è capace di demolire in un momento quello che abbiamo costruito con pazienza durante lungo tempo. The evil one is far more astute than we are, and he is able to demolish in a moment what it took us years of patience to build up. Here, we need to implore the grace to learn how to offset, to thwart evil without pulling up the good wheat or presuming to protect like supermen what the Lord alone can protect. Aiuta a non farsi cadere nelle braccia davanti allo spessore dell'iniquità, davanti allo scherno dei malvagi. All this helps us not to let our guard down before the depths of iniquity, before the mockery of the wicked. In these situations of weariness, the Lord says to us, Have courage. I have overcome the world. E ultima perché questa omelia non vi stanchi troppo. C'è anche la stanchezza di se stessi. E forse... And finally, says the Holy Father, lest you be wearied by this homily itself, there is also weariness of ourselves. This may be the most dangerous weariness of all. That is because the other two kinds come from being exposed, from going out of ourselves to anoint and to do battle. For our job is to care for others. But this third kind of weariness is more self-referential. It is dissatisfaction with oneself, but not the dissatisfaction of someone who directly confronts himself and serenely acknowledges his sinfulness and his need for God's mercy. Such people ask for help and then move forward. Here we are speaking of a weariness associated with wanting yet not wanting, having given up everything but continuing to yearn for the flesh pots of Egypt, toying with the, the illusion of being something different. I like to call this kind of weariness flirting with spiritual worldliness. When we are alone, we realize how many areas of our life are steeped in this worldliness, so much so that we may feel that it can never be completely washed away. This can be a dangerous kind of weariness. The book of Revelation shows us the reason for this weariness. You have borne up for my sake and you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Only love gives true rest. What is not loved becomes tiresome and in time brings about a harmful weariness. The most profound and mysterious image of how the Lord deals with our pastoral tiredness is that, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. The scene of his washing the feet of his disciples. I like to think of this as the cleansing of discipleship. The Lord purifies the path of discipleship itself. He gets involved with us. He becomes personally responsible for removing every stain, all that grimy, worldly smog which clings to us from the journey we make in his name. From our feet, we can tell how the rest of our body is doing. 
The way we follow the Lord reveals how our heart is faring. The wounds on our feet, our sprains and our weariness are signs of how we have followed Him, of the paths we have taken in seeking the lost sheep and in leading the flock to green pastures and still waters. The Lord washes us and cleanses us of all the dirt our feet have accumulated in following Him. This is something holy. Do not let your feet remain dirty. Like battle wounds, the Lord kisses them and washes away the grime of our labors. Our discipleship itself is cleansed by Jesus so that we can rightly feel joyful, fulfilled, free of fear and guilt. And impelled to go out even to the ends of the earth, to every periphery. In this way we can bring the good news to the most abandoned. Knowing that he is with us always, even to the end of the world. Let us learn how to be weary, but weary in the best of ways. For those of you just joining us, this is Vatican Radio's live English language coverage of Holy Mass, the Chrism Mass on the morning of Holy Thursday in St. Peter's Basilica. Pope Francis is the principal celebrant and has just concluded his homily. A homily focused on the experience of weariness, the different kinds of weariness that we experience, especially those of us who are called to the ministerial priesthood. a homily delivered by the chief priest of the Diocese of Rome to the clergy who assist him. In his ministry. A weariness that is inevitable and that is in a mysterious way part of God's plan for us. And especially again for his priests. Figli e fratres carissimi. Hanno redevente memoria di ei, qua Christus Dominus Sacerdotium Sum, con Apostolis Novisque Comunicavit, Vulti Solim Factas Promissiones con un Episcopo Vestro e Popolo Santo da ei rinnovare? Vulti Domino Iesu Arcius Congiungi e Conformari the renewal of priestly vows. Renunciantes, a que promisa confirmante sacrono ficium que Christi amore inducti ergas eius ecclesia sacerdotalis vestri ordinaciones die con gaudio suscepisti. Ultes fedeles esse dispensatores misteriorum dei per santa neucaristian ceterasque liturgicas acciones Atque sacrum docendi munus 
Christum caput atque pastorem sectando fidelitem implere, non bonorum cupidi sen animarum celo tanto in inducti, With these prayers, the priests have renewed their vows. fathers asked the faithful to pray for their priests. Perché sia fedele al servizio apostolico, affidato la mia persona, e tra voi diventi ogni giorno di più immagine viva e autentica del Cristo sacerdote, buon pastore, maestro e servo di tutti. asked the faithful to pray for him. And a prayer that the Lord might watch over all of us in his love and lead all of us, pastors and sheep of the fold, to eternal life. the O Redemptor. The oils are brought in procession to be blessed and consecrated. The blessing of the oil of the sick, the blessing of the oil of the catechumens and the consecration of the sacred chrism.
The Oil of the Sick. The Holy Father now prepares the blessing. Deus tu sive consolationes pater, qui per filium tuum infirmantium in languoribus medere voluisti. Orationi fidei ad esto propitius, emite questum spiritum tuum santum paracritum de celis, in ac pinguedim olei, quando viri di ligno producere dignatus es ad reflexione in corporis, o tua santa benedizione, sit omni chi ho conguento per ungitur, tutam in corporis, anime ac spiritus, ad evacuando somnes dolores, omnes infirmitates, omnenquen agritudinem, sit olium tuum santum domine, nobis a te benedictum, in nomine domini Iesu Christi, chi vivit e regna, in secula seculorum. The blessing rites now proceed with the blessing of the oil of the catechumens. The texts of these Latin blessings are available in the uh, liturgical libretto uh, on the Vatican website www.vatican.va the English page of which will take you uh, to the libretto. Catecumenorum The Oil of the Catechumens the oil of the catechumens which is used in the rites of baptism. Deus, previs tue virtus et presidium, qui sin un roboris in ole e creatura possuisti, ocolium benedicere dineris et catechumenis che o liniantur concede fortitudinem, o divina sapienziam e virtutem recipientes, Evangelium Christi tui alcius intelegan, magno animo laboris vite cristiane agrediantur, et digni adopsionis filiorum effecti, se in ecclesia tua renasci et vivere letentur, per Christum Dominum nostrum.
Oleum Sanctum Chrisma. The oil of the sacred chrism. This oil of great fragrance and price used for chrismation, for the sacraments of confirmation and for ordination. The sacrament of holy orders. The deacon ministrant has poured the fragrant substances into the uh, the amphora, the vessel carrying the oils. Fratelli carissimi, rivolgiamo la nostra preghiera a Dio Padre Onnipotente perché benedica e santifichi questo olio misto a profumo e coloro che ne riceveranno l'unzione siano interiormente consacrati e resi partecipe della missione di Cristo Redentore. And the Holy Father now asking all of his brothers, priests and bishops present to pray, and all the faithful really, to God the Father Almighty, that he may bless and sanctify the uh, fragrant oil, and that uh, those outwardly signed with it might be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. Gratulationis obsequium sushi pe benignus, quod voce nostra letenter divi redit ecclesia. Tu enim in principio terram producere fructifera linea iusisti, inter que uius pinguissimi liquoris, Ministre olive nascerentur, quarum frutus sacro chrismati deserviret. Namet David, profetico spiritu gratiae tue sacramenta prenoscens, vultus nostros in olio exilarandos e secantavit, et cum mundi crimina diluvio quonda ne spiareto refuso, similitudinem futuri muneris, Columba demonstram per olive ramum pacem terris reditam nunciavit. Quod in novissimus temporibus manifestis et effectibus declaratum con in baptismatis aquis omnium criminum commissa delentibus, ec ole iuncio vultus nostros iucundus efficit ac serenus. Inde esian moisi, Famulo tuo mandatum de disti, utarum fratrem sum, prius aqualotum per infusionem uius unguenti costitueret sacerdotem. Ascetis, ascessit ad hoc et amplior honor, cum filius tuus, Iesus Christus, Dominus noster, lavari se a Ioane undis Iordanicis et segisset, tung enim Spirito Santo, in columbe similitudinis de su permiso, subsequentis vocis testimonio declarasti, in ipso un genito tibi optime compraquise, e manifeste visus es comprobare, con olio letizie preconsortibus suis un gendo, David profeta, mente presara cecinera. Teigitur, 
de precamur Domine, u tuius creature pinguedinim santificare tua benedizione dignieris, et ei santo spiritus in miscere virtutem cooperante Christi tui potentia a cui u santo nomine Crisma nomine accepit, unde unsisti sacerdotes, reges, profetas e martires tuos, ut spiritalis lavacri baptismati renovandis, creaturan crismatis in sacramentum perfecte salutis, viteque confirmes, ut santificazione unzione sinfusa e corruzione prime nativitatis absorpta, templum tue maestatis efecti, acceptabiles vite innocentia redolescan. Ut secundum constitutionis tue sacramentum, regio e sacerdotali profetico honore perfusi, vestimento incorrupti munieres induantur. Ut sit is, qui renati fuerit et sacuat Spiritus Santo, crisma salutis, iosco e eterne vite participes, e celestis glorie facias esse consortes. Per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Truly an extraordinary prayer of consecration. O God, author of every increase and of all spiritual growth, graciously accept the joyful homage of thanksgiving which the Church renders you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to produce fruit-bearing plants, and among them the olive tree, to bring forth the great richness of this oil that its fruit might serve for the making of sacred chrism. David, too, foreseeing that by the spirit of prophecy the sacraments of your grace sang of oil-making, our faces radiant with joy. And when in former days the world's sins were washed away in the great flood, the dove, showing forth by an olive branch a figure of the gift to come, announced that peace had been restored to the earth. In these latter times all this has been manifestly fulfilled. For when all sinful deeds are washed away in the waters of baptism, an anointing with this oil makes our faces joyful and serene. Moreover, to your servant Moses you gave the command that he make his brother Aaron washed first with water, a priest by the pouring of this oil. To this there came still greater dignity when your son Jesus Christ our Lord insisted on being washed by John in Jordan's waters. For as your Holy Spirit, in the likeness of a dove, was sent upon him from on high, your voice then followed and declared him to be your only begotten Son, well-pleasing to you. And you were seen clearly to affirm him, just as your prophet David had foretold, as the one anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. To you, therefore, O Lord, we pray that by your blessing you may graciously sanctify the rich substance of this oil you have created, and permeate it with the strength of the Holy Spirit by means, too, of the power at work in your Christ, from whose holy name is named the chrism, with which you have anointed your priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. For those to be reborn through the spiritual bath of baptism Make the chrism you have created a holy sign of the fullness of life and salvation, that through the sanctification imparted by the anointing and with the corruption of their first bath now cleansed, they may be made a temple of your majesty and give forth the fragrance of an innocence of life pleasing to you. By the nature of the sacrament you have established, may they be endowed with the dignity of king, priest, and prophet, and clothed with the garment of that incorruption which is your gift, 
And may this oil become the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and make them partakers of eternal life, sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. the blessing of these precious oils, the consecration of the sacred chrism. The Holy Father has received and placed on the altar simpler gifts of bread and wine that shall become for us more precious than anything on earth. In the sacrifice the Holy Father is about to offer, heaven and earth are reconciled. And the simple offerings of bread and wine become the body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made really, truly, substantially present in the Eucharistic species. Pope Francis now sensing the altar space once again, a final act of ritual purification and preparation, setting this space off as one that is and is not of this world on which heaven and earth meet and are reconciled. In the sacrifice of the true Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world, whose one perfect sacrifice is made present for us. Orate fratres, ut meum adversum sacrificium acceptabile fiat apodeum patrim omnipotentem. Uiu sacrifici potentia domine questus, et vetustatem nostra clemente abstergat, et novitatem nobis augiat et salutem. Per Christum, Dominum nostrum. Amen. Dominus so oviscum. Et cum spiritu. Sursum corda. Amen. Amen. Gracias agamos, Domino Deo nostro. Dignum et justum est. Veredignum et justum est, cum et salutare. Nos tibi semper, et ubique gratias agere, Domine, Sancte Pater, Omnipotens Eterne Deus, qui unigenitum tuum, Santi Spiritus, unzione novi et eterni, testamenti costituisti pontificem, et inefabili dignatus est posizione sancire, ut unicum eius sacerdotium in ecclesia servaretum. Ipse enim non solum regali sacerdotio popolum acquisitionis ex ornat, sedetiam fraterna omines eligit bonitate, ut sacri sui ministeri fiant 
manu un imposizione participes, cui sacrificio un reno vent eius nomine, redemptione umane, tuis apartante fili pascale convivium, et pleven tuan santan caritate prevenian, verbo nutrian, refician sacramentis. Qui vitam prote fratunque salute tradentes, ad ipsius Christi ni tanto in immagine conformari, e constante tibi fidem amorenque testentur. Unde et nos, Domine, cun angelis et santis universi, tibi confitemur in exultazione dicentes. Clementissima Pater, per Iesum Cristo, un figlio in tuo, Domino nostro, supplices rogamus ac petimus, uti accepta avias et benedicas, ec dona, ec monera, ec santa sacrificia e libata, in primis quativi offerimus pro ecclesia tua santa cattolica, con pacificare, custodire, adunare, e reggere dinieris toto orbe terrarum, una con me, in digno famulo tuo, con ecclesie tue prese voluisti, et omnius ortodoxis, actui catolices, et apostolite, fidei cultori. Memento, Domine, famulorum, famularumque tuarum, et omnium circunstantium, quorum tibi, fides conita est et nevozio, proquibus tibi offerimus, vel qui tibi offerunt to sacrificium laudis, pro sesuisque omnibus, pro redenzione animarum suarum, pro spet salutis et incolumitatis sue, tibique reddunt vota sua, eterno Deo, vivo et vero. Comunicantes, in memoriam venerantes, in primis gloriose semper virginis Mariae, Genitricis Dei et Domini Nostri, Iesu Christi, sedet Beati Iosef e Iusen Virginis Sponsi, et Beatorum Apostolorum ac Martyrum Tuorum, Petri et Pauli, Andrei, 
Jacobi, Ioannis, Tome, Jacobi, Filippi, Bartolomei, Mattei, Simoni, Settadei, Lini, Cleti, Clementis, Xisti, Cornelii, Cipriani, Laurenzi, Grisogoli, Ioanni, Set Pauli, Cosme e Damiani, et omnium santorum tuorum, quorum meritis, precibusque concedas, ut in omnibus protectionis tue muniamur auxilio. Anche si tur oblazione in servitutis nostre, se del conte famiglie tue que sumus domine ut placatus accipias. Dies que nostros in tua pace disponas, ad que ab eterna damnazione non seripe, et in electorum tuorum iubia regia numerari. Qua noblazione in tu Deus, in omnibus quesmus benedictam, ascritam, ratam, racionabilem, acceptabilem que facere dinieri, ut nobis corpus et sanguis, fiat dilectissimi fili tui, Domini nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui pride, quam pateretur, accepit panem in santa sacra venerabiles manus suas, et elevatis oculis in cielum, a te, Deum, Patrem Suun Omnipotente, tibi gratia sagens, benedicit, fregit, leditque discipuli sui sicet, accipite et manducate ex hoc omnes. Hoc est enim corpus meum, quod provobis tradetur. The body of Christ, the flesh of the living God, who eats it shall have life in abundance. Simil modo, post concenatum, accipien setum peclarum calice, in santas ag venerabiles manus suas, item tibi gracia sagens benedicti, dedico discipuli suis dicit, accipite et vivite ex eo omnes, hic est enim cali sanguinis mei, Novi et eterni testamenti, qui provovis et promultis et fundetur in remissionem peccatorum, o facite in mea in commemorazione. The blood of Christ, the blood of the true Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the blood that is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Who drinks it shall not die forever. Mysterium Fidei Domine, no servi tui, sed plebs tua santa, e iusten Christi fili tui, Domini nostri, tam beate passionis, nec non ab inferis resurrezioni, sed et in celos gloriose ascensia, oferimus preclare maestate tue, de tuis donis sagdatis, ostian pura, ostian santa, Ostian Immaculatan, Panem Santum Vita Eterne, et Calicem Saluti Perpetu. Supra que propicio ac sereno vulto respicere dignere. Et accepta avere, sicuti accepta avere dignatus es munera pueri tu iusti aber, et sacrificium patriarche nostri abrae, 
Equativi optuli, sumus sacerdos tuus Melchisedec, Santum Sacrificium Immaculata Noctium. Suplices, te rogamos, Omnipotens Deus, iuve ec per ferri per manus santi angeli tui, in sublime altare tuum, in conspecto divine maestatis tui, ut cocot e sac altaris participazione, sacrosantum fili tui, corpus e sangue e sum seris, omne benedicione celesti e grazia replea. Memento etiam Domine, famulorum famularum quetuarum, qui nos precesserum cum signo fidei et dormiunt in somno pacis. Ipsis Domine et omnibus in Christo quiescentibus, locum refrigerie lucis et pacis ut indulgeas deprecamur. Nobis cuoque peccatoribus famuris tuis, de multitudine miserationum tuarum speramtibus, parte maliquam et de societate donare dinieris, cum tui santis e apostolis et martiribus, cum Ioanne, Stefano, Mattia, Barnaba, Ignazio, Alexandro, Marcellino, Petro, Felicitate, Perpetua, Agata, Lucia, Agnete, Cecilia, Anastasia et omnibus santis tuis, intraquorum nos consortium, non estimator meriti, se devenie quesumus largitor ademitte, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Per quem, e comnia Domine semper bona creas, santificas, vivificas, benedicis et prestas nobis. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est Ideo Patria Onipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Santi, Omnis Honor et Gloria, per Omnia Secula Seculorum. Precerti salutarimus moniti e divina istituzione formati audemus dicere. Quesumus Domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostri, utope misericordie tue ad iuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbazione securi, spectantes beata anspen, et adventum salvatoris nostri Gesù Christi. Domine Iesu Christi.
existe, que existe apóstolis tuis, pachen relinquo vobis, pachen neam do vobis. Ne respicias pecata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, e anque, secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificare et coadunare dineris, que vivis reñas in secula seculo. Amen. Pax Domini, sit semper vobiscum. Et cum spiritu Offerte vobis pacem. And the Holy Father now exchanging the sign of peace with the principal Khan celebrants and with the other sacred ministers. The other cardinals, bishops, and priests, con celebrant, and the faithful do the same. Ecce equitolis pecatamundi, beati che accenan agni vocati sunt. Pope Francis has communicated with the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord, present under the Eucharistic species of bread and wine.
For those of you just joining us, this is Vatican Radio's live English language coverage of Chrism Mass on the morning of Holy Thursday in St. Peter's Basilica. Pope Francis is the principal celebrant of the Mass, and the rites of communion have just concluded in the Basilica.
this liturgical action has also seen the blessing of the sacred oils, the oil of the catechumens, the oil of the infirm, and the sacred chrism. Oremos. Suplices te rogamos omnipotens Deus, ut costuis reficis sacramentis, Christi bonus otto refici mere antur, qui vivit regnat in secula seculorum. Dominus obiscum, sin nomen Domini benedictum, aiutare nostrum in nomine Domini. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Santo. Fratelli carissimi, abbiamo benedetto il Crisma, l'olio del Catecumini e degli infirmi, per sottolineare il mistero della Chiesa come sacramento di Cristo che santifica ogni realtà e situazione di vita. A voi, Vescovi e Sacerdoti, sono ora affidati perché attraverso il vostro ministero la grazia divina fluisca nelle anime apportatrice di forza e di vita. Rispettate, venerate e conservate con cura particolare questi oli segni della grazia di Dio. Le persone, i luoghi e le cose che saranno da essi segnati possano risplendere nella stessa santità di Dio che per un dono mirabile del suo amore ha voluto che nei segni sacramentali si rinnovassero misticamente gli eventi della storia della salvezza. Dear brothers, said Pope Francis, we have blessed the chrism, the oil of the catechumens, and the oil of the sick, to underline the mystery of the Church as the sacrament of Christ who sacrifies who sanctifies every reality and situation of life. They are now entrusted to you, bishops and priests, so that divine grace, the bearer of strength and life, may flow in souls through your ministry. Take care to respect, honor, and protect these oils, signs of God's grace. May those persons, places, and things marked by them be resplendent with the holiness of God, who by a marvelous gift of his love has deigned that the events of history of salvation might be renewed mystically in sacramental signs. These final words of dismissal, the Mass is ended. Pope Francis pausing a moment in the sanctuary in prayerful recollection before the statue of Our Lady and Child.
antiphon the Ave Regina Celorum. Now the O Redemptor The Acolytes The Sacred Ministers The Celebrants The Deacons Ministrant and Holy Father, the principal celebrant, recede from the Basilica. Starting this evening here in Rome with the Missa in Cena Domini, over which Pope Francis is to preside in the local juvenile prison. The Church enters the Sacred Triduum culminating in the great Easter Vigil, leading all of us through the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as Pope Francis makes his way now from the sanctuary, he continues his recession from the Basilica of St. Peter's. With thanks to all, and especially to all of you who joined us through our partners in radio and television, EWTN TV, Net TV, Radio Maria, Salt and Light TV, Telecare TV, Catholic TV, and Shalom World TV. From me, Chris Oltieri, and from all of us here at Vatican Radio, a very blessed continuation of Holy Week. Laudetur Jesus Christus.
teach everything he commanded them to teach. New ways to communicate God's word. Present positive images to our people. This message of truth and salvation. Culture of uh, encounter. Gospel of Christ worldwide. Shalom World TV. Twenty four seven. Faith filled. Dynamic. Virtue building. Commercial free. Family friendly. Catholic charismatic channel to the whole world. Promote the gift of church teaching. Dedicated for the new evangelization. Mentor the young into a deeper embrace of the Catholic faith. Wonderful contributions to the church. People of prayer. Attractive people, attractive messages. Peace of Christ. Promote the values of life. This is media at its very best. The voice of the church. great love. Taking this to the next step. Shalom World TV. Shalom. 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 Shalom World. God's own channel.